When it comes to over-ear headphones with active noise cancellation, my two go-to was always the AirPod Max and then the Sony MX4. But now, recently Sony dropped a brand new version of the XM4, the XM5s, with some impressive improvements as well as some things I wish they left unchanged. And so in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and compare each of these headphones head to head, cover all the pros and cons, as well as personal experience and thoughts to help you find the best over ear headphones with noise cancellation available in the market if you're debating between the two Sony's and the AirPod Max. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm really happy that Sony decided to resume the production line of the XM4s. Even though the XM5 is released, you can still find this in retail stores and online stores for around $350. And then the new XM5s, these can be found for around $400. And then the AirPod Max, even though these been released for about 18 months now, the retail price for AirPod Max, it's $550. But since it's been on the market for quite some time now, I typically find them fluctuating anywhere between the low fours to mid 500s. So since we have all three of these headphones lined up on the countertop, let's talk about the quality. AirPod Max, even though they're the most expensive headphones we have here, they're actually made out of some insane high quality material. The exterior texture, as you can see, it's made out of aluminum, the headphones, and the little rod that connects the two ends together it's actually made out of stainless steel and this top part actually has a nice mix texture which means it's breathable so if you are known to sweat a lot you're gonna definitely appreciate this breathable mesh that they have going on here and unlike the sony's the airpods are the only ones are somewhat modular as you could easily detach the ear cups as they magnetically just attach on like so you can buy different color versions of the ear cups if you just want to personalize it that way you can or if you damage it wear and tear it's easy to replace it's not game over unlike the sony's and the cups are breathable and also if you wear glasses like i do it does have a nice seal around my frames so there's no leakage of some sort or anything like that with the airpod max now the airpod max come in a variety of different color choices to choose from and according to some leaks and rumors there's additional colors coming out in the near future of this year. Now let's go ahead and talk about the MX-5. The XM5s, they change things up differently this time. As no longer, if you may have noticed, it's not a collapsible design, which means this is the fixed structure. And just like the Max, this part swivels, which means you can rest them around your neck pretty comfortably, have them facing upwards. The ear cuffs I have noticed are improved. The texture, the quality feels much better than the MX-4 feels more premium and also it has like a silicone like texture as well i'm noticing i'm saying texture a lot right now but it's extremely light compared to the airpod max now the mx3 this is the design that i personally like slim it's minimum it has a nice low-key design and the ear cuffs they do have like memory foam so both the mx5 and the mx4 they go around glasses frame really well there's very little sound leakage or anything like that. It does have a nice seal. And in terms of durability, I'm able to flex both of these just fine. XM5s, no problem. It's easier to flex on these. And the Pros, yep, stainless steel. It's really durable. Now the Sunnies, the ones we have here are obviously in black. There is also a tan color option to choose from as well. But in terms of color variety, those are the only two colors that you could purchase the Sony's in. Now the slider adjustment, the AirPod Max uses a nice sliding mechanism. The MX-5, same story. As soon as you place it, you leave it, it stays in place. It's an autom it doesn't easily readjust or anything like that. It stays locked on. But the Sony XM4s are using the old school, like traditional locking mechanism where it literally clicks into place. It's all personal preference, but just something I wanted to quickly note. Regardless, they all have this important swivel function, so they're built to fit anybody's head just fine. Now, out of the box, all three of these headphones do include some type of travel case. The AirPod Max include this weird looking pouch thing that many journalists criticize, and myself included, I also agree. It looks like an oddly shaped bra, and it doesn't really offer that much protection. When you place the headphones inside, there's little magnets inside that will allow the headphones to go into sleep mode. I'll cover more about that in a little bit, but that's literally the protection that it offers. It doesn't really offer much. 
then was the XM5s. Since the structure is fixed, unfortunately, this it's much larger. The travel case is much larger than the XM4s. But it is nice that they did provide a full cover case, travel case, unlike the Max. And then was the XM4s. Since you have the ability to collapse, these things simply just fall into place like so. And when you compare the three, the MX4 obviously is more compact, easy to travel with, especially if you fly a lot. Now things that they provide, the XM4s is the only one that actually includes the uh, airline adapter. And they also include a 3.5 aux cable. So you can hardwire the headset. I'm not sure if it includes a USB-C to charge the head headphone because I, I think I forgot to put it back in there, but I'll put a little text there if it does come included or not. The XM5, similar story. Just you do not get the adapter for airlines, the little airline adapter, but it's a really small USB-C cable to USB-A. They do provide the aux cable. So you can hardwire it that way. And that's basically it. AirPod Max, you just get the lightning cable to charge them and that's it. But Apple does sell a 3.5 millimeter jack on their website, which is a lightning to an audio jack port. They sell for $35, pretty expensive. And according to the internet, I have I don't have this cable, so I really can't confirm this. If the AirPod Max have no charge, they're not gonna work even if you directly connect it with the aux cable. The Sonys, they'll still operate even without a charge, just they're not gonna sound great. And of course you lose the noise cancellation features and etc. So since we're in the subject of battery life, here's the quick rundown. Both of these Sonys can achieve 30 hours of audio listening time under a single charge and 20 hours of talk time. And then these two also support fast charging, which means a 10 minute charge will allow these two headphones to last up to 10 hours. Now the XM5s, support something interesting this year. With the proper power adapter, like one of these ones, a three minute charge will allow these headphones to last up to three hours, which is quite impressive. Now, as for the AirPod Max, being the most expensive headphones here on the table, you will assume this will be on par or even better in terms of battery life. Unfortunately, it's not. Apple lists these headphones to be able to last up to 20 hours under a single charge, which is 10 hours less compared to the Sony's, but does indeed support fast charging, which is also somewhat disappointing, as a five minute charge will allow these headphones to last an hour and a half of audio listening time. Now, as I stated earlier, since the AirPod Max, believe it or not, yes, there's a digital crown and a little button right here for the different modes you can select from. There's no manual power on and off button. The way you turn these off is if you leave it on flat surface for about five minutes, it will enter low power mode, AKA it's still not fully turned off. So the Bluetooth is enabled, the Find My feature is enabled. So it's slowly just using energy. And when you put it in a case, it enters ultra low power mode, which means it turns off Bluetooth and the Find My feature. So it's still somewhat draining battery life because as soon as you take it out, it immediately knows and it will quickly connect to your devices. That's it in terms of this weird smart case. Now let's go ahead and talk about the active noise cancellation. All three of these headsets, don't get me wrong, they're amazing when it comes to its active noise cancellation technology. The XM Force has been the champion for like the longest time. And then Apple rolled out the AirPod Max. So I have to give it to the AirPod Max in terms of its active noise cancellation. It's really impressive. But this time, the new XM5s definitely takes that lead. I've tested these a couple of times in different environments like the gym, casually walking down the streets with traffic and such. And these actually do a fantastic job with just a quarter of the audio of whatever track I'm listening to. The active noise cancellation improvement in this headset, it's really good. But honestly, it's like almost on par with the AirPod Max. Then third place, I have to give it to the XM4. But they're really close to each other, especially the Max and the MX5. Sony did an excellent job in terms of enhancing their active noise cancellation because now there's additional microphones on the each ear cup and there's two processors dedicated for the active noise cancellation instead of one like we previously had was the XM4. But the XM4 for 350 bucks, it still is a good deal for a really good active noise cancellation headphones. But the, the XM5 also has some in impressive software features that I wish the AirPod Max had too. It has an environment awareness feature where it will automatically know based on the environment you're in to activate noise cancellation and disable it. It does this so flawlessly you don't even notice. The XM4 
has a similar feature, but you could do it on the app. And then when it comes to answering phone calls and stuff like that, in first place, I have to give it to the microphone quality that the AirPod Max has. I don't know, Apple seems to really nail, the, nail down the coffin in terms of having the best microphone for FaceTime or just answering calls in general. But XM5 definitely come really close. And then the XM4 comes in third place. Now, when it comes to audio quality, if you're looking for something that gives you the most bass, I have to give it to the XM4. These things, the bass quality on the XM4 really does give you a nice little kick. And then in second place, I have to give it to the AirPod Max. It's like a mixture between XM4 and the XM5. But don't get me wrong, the XM5 is just, I notice it's more vocal focus, I wanna say, because I do find it more enjoyable listening to my content that I'm watching like on YouTube through the XM5 than I do with the MX4. So to give you a little background, I love listening to EDM style songs, like electric dance and such. So I'm more focused on the bass, which is why in my opinion, I like listening with the XM4 than I do with the, the XM5. But the AirPod Max, again, they're like in the middle. So these two sound great if you're into like bass rich songs. But unlike the AirPods, both of these Sonys, on their app allow you to fully customize the EQ settings to your own personal preference. With the AirPods, you have to use the EQ settings, but don't get me wrong, all three of these sound fantastic. It's no wonder they're super popular. Now the way you control each headset is really interesting. The AirPods, they actually have a digital crown right here, and this allows you to adjust the audio. And then if you tap on it, you can pause and play, skip tracks, and then this other button right over here, this allows you to actually enable the different modes that it has, like noise cancellation and transparency mode. Sony's, these two Sony's, they have a very similar button layout. And unlike the AirPods, you have the freedom to power off and pair. So you have the pair button right here, and you also have the modes button, the little different modes you could toggle button right here as well. Then don't get me wrong, you do have the ability to adjust the audio as they do have touch sensors on the sides, on the right side, which a swipe up will increase the volume and swipe down decrease, and then right and left will allow you to skip or go back to a previously listened track. So they all have the basic music controls, but if you like to, with the Sony, you could actually go in the app and personalize and customize some of the buttons to do other things. With the AirPods, you could do the exact same thing, you just have to go on your Apple settings and change this button layout right here. Now the Sony's do have an interesting feature. They do have something called multi-link, which allows you to connect to two devices at the same time, like an iPad or an iPhone. With the Apple AirPods, so long as you're in the Apple ecosystem, as soon as the AirPods pair to one, one device that's linked to your Apple account, it's already automatically paired across all your other Apple devices, including your computers. And this allows you to use Apple's quick switch. I forgot the name, but Basically, if you're listening to something with your iPad as a final example, and you receive a phone call, as soon as you answer that call while you're still wearing your headphones, the software will automatically communicate and quickly connect to your AirPods without you having to fiddle with your Bluetooth settings or anything like that. It's super convenient and works nine out of 10 times. Now, a feature that the AirPods have that the Sony's lack is the Find My support. Yes, the AirPod Max, thanks to the recent update, does indeed have Find My capabilities. In other words, if you lose your AirPod Max, you can actually find the last known location these AirPod Max were last connected to your device. And if it gets stolen, it does have an anti-theft ability, where if somebody steals these and they try pairing up to their device, it's not gonna let them because these are linked to, to your Apple account. So it basically turns into a paperweight if somebody steals this and they have no choice but to return it to you. Sony's they don't offer anything like that, unfortunately. But the XM4, I cannot forget to mention, does have NFC support. So if you have an Android device, a simple tap on the left side earbud allows you to quickly pair your Android device to this headset. So yeah, each headphone is jam-packed with their own unique software ability. But now, before you start thinking I might have forgot, because I almost did, let's talk about ambient mode. So when it comes to ambient mode, Apple honestly has it hands down. Their transparency mode that they have works really well, super easy to enable, and I like the fact that it doesn't make people's voices sound all robotic. The Sony XM5s, it's ambient mode. It's actually output in second place compared to the AirPod Max. It does a great job, especially with the awareness feature where speak to talk feature, where it'll quickly switch to an ambient mode. 
so you can actually talk to somebody and actually hear them respond without you having to take off or lift off one ear side of the headphone or anything like that to hear the other person you're talking to. Then the XM4, I'll put this in third place in terms of its ambient mode. Sounds good, gets the job done. Just I have noticed sometimes the voices sound kind of odd. So all in all, with that said, was all these three headphones on the table. My final verdict is this. For the best bang for your buck, the XM4 is definitely a good value. And I personally think it's one of the best looking headphones available on the market, including the, comparing it against the MX5. I don't know. This is just the iconic headphone look. But I guess this is just my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you agree or not. But when I think of headphones, this is the look that comes to mind. Now the XM5. This is good if you're not on a tight budget, but you like to have the, the latest and greatest, then yeah, by all means, go ahead and get the MX-5 over the MX-4. The active noise cancellation on these are significantly improved. So for just $50 more, I think it's worth the update. But if you like bass, one more time, XM4 is the way to go. Or at least give them a try. If you don't like it, just return it and exchange it for the XM5. Now as for the AirPod Max, hmm, you're just flexing at this point. It can look like a fine piece of jewelry. But if you are in that Apple ecosystem and you want a really user-friendly over-to-ear headphones with all the bells and whistles, AirPod Max would be my choice, my recommendation. Just be warned, these are heavy. So if you wear headphones for long durations, these may become uncomfortable to you within the first few hours. Unlike these two, these two are extremely light and comfortable to wear for very long sessions. Oh no, there you guys have it. Let me know in the comment section which one of these headphones are you gonna go for and why. I'm gonna go stick with these. These are super compact and extremely easy to travel. AirPod Max, I love using these. Normally when I'm editing a video cause they quickly connect across my Apple devices. And this, I have no idea yet. Yeah, it's not really worth upgrading from the MX4 to the 5. If I never owned the MX4, then yeah, I would have easily just went with the MX5. I don't know, there you guys have it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Again, let me know your opinion in the video description down below. For links for these headphones, they'll be all linked in the video description down below and they will be automatically updated if there are any sales or discounts go on for any of these headphones that you see right here. So make sure to click on those links so you don't miss any latest deals. Aside from that, if you wanna watch more, maybe check out this video over here as I go through every hidden feature that the AirPod Max has to offer. And then that video over there, that is a video that YouTube's recommending specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.